Contemplata aliis tradere means to give to others the fruits of one's contemplation. It is a motto commonly used by the Dominican order. And what better place might there be for contemplation to begin than at the foot of the cross of Christ? Fra Angelico's famous frescoes in the convent of San Marco in Florence are renowned for depicting a perfect balance between the material and spiritual worlds. Upon entering the cloister itself, one is first greeted by this life-size figure of Dominic, kneeling underneath the crucified Christ. It acts as a frontispiece to the entire theological program of painted walls within the monastery, immediately placing the viewer in the proper perspective for the spiritual wonders to be discovered within. The body of Christ hangs in dignified repose, not contorted or deformed by the pangs of suffering, yet clearly bearing the marks of the passion. He exhibits a divine peacefulness. The paradox of this depiction has been addressed by St. Thomas Aquinas two centuries previously, when he wrote in his Summa Theologica that Christ experienced both suffering and blessing on the cross. Suffering came through his voluntary embrace of the ravages of torture and death, and yet he knew in the midst of that suffering that his actions would break the very bonds of death itself. For by his physical resurrection he would become the firstborn from the dead and lead those who believe in him to the everlasting joys promised in the kingdom of the Father. Thus the pallid and pierced body of the crucified Christ exhibits a beauty that hints at the resurrection and the glory to come. The divine perfection of the word made flesh has been captured by the painter monk who has combined the spiritual delicacy of medieval reflection with the precision and the modeling of a Renaissance master. The artist was not only a theologian in paint, but a technician whose pigments could fashion the anatomy of one who was both fully human and fully divine. Repeated hatchings of yellow ochre mixed with white and black delineate the subtle muscularity of the torso. Feathery strokes of brown approximate hair. The stretch of the tendons in the arms are accentuated by broad strokes of white reflecting the light emanating from an unseen source. The undulating shadows of the ribcage are dramatically interrupted by a deep black slice of open wound dripping with crimson blood. This is a reserved and painterly image of the mark left by the lance, tapping a fountain of grace that so enraptured St. Catherine of Siena that she was invited to drink fully from the side of Christ in one of her Eucharistic ecstasies. Above that wound, the striations and the flowing blood-specked locks and parted beard help frame the broad planes of Christ's beautifully modeled face as it tilts downward toward Dominic. Christ's eyes are almost closed, and the lips are slightly parted as if the dying breath of the Savior rendered some unheard message to the kneeling figure below. A breeze passes through the scene made evident by the rustled loincloth. Its white folds flutter against the stark backdrop of an abstract azure sky. All is silent. All is serene. The anguished face of Dominic alone violates the peacefulness of the scene. The friar's visage is furrowed with grief. The sharp black stubble of his unshaven face suggests that he has engaged in one of his all-night vigils. Here, kneeling at the foot of the cross, the founder of the Order of Preachers has taken the place historically reserved for Mary Magdalene, yet it is a fitting substitute. For she who was the first witness to the resurrection and the first to announce it to his disciples has been called the Apostle to the Apostles and the special patroness of all preachers. Christ himself had declared that Mary had chosen the better part for sitting at his feet and reflecting upon his teachings. Thus, the cradle of contemplation begins here, in close proximity to the source of all grace. Fra Angelico's painting was meant to be seen up close. 
for it is only then that one can see the blue veins coursing through the saint's hands or the tears welling up in his eyes that are tinged red with emotion. Like the Magdalene, the saint weeps over what sin has wrought and the debt that love had to pay in order to gain our redemption. Humility shrouds the self-conscious sinner, and in humility one can find the beginnings of wisdom. Hence, the artist invites his fellow friars who would pass the image every day to ponder the passion and place themselves at the spot where Dominic kneels. For it is there that one can penetrate the mysteries of salvation and gain true understanding.